here's how, here's how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna play each one of these mics in its optimum position. I'm gonna test them right where it's supposed to be and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about each one or introducing them. Instead, I'm just gonna put a link down here, a little icon pop up, tell you what each one is, so you'll know what we're talking about. Actually, hang on. I'm gonna play a D scale into each mic and then I'm gonna play the B part of the tune, The Rolling Waves, the jig. I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I picked the B part because it's got more range. And two, because it's a tune that I like, so if I'm gonna be playing something a hundred times, you know, I want it to be something I actually enjoy playing. Then I'm gonna go back and talk about each one and hit on positioning, because that's important too, and it is different for each mic. So then just a couple other tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years of playing and recording and all that nonsense. So yeah, let's get after it. Let's check them out.
is a weird one. The zoom, um, it's it's all in one, which is kind of cool. It's got two stereo mics that you can configure to either 90 degrees or 120, depending on how wide of a field of musicians you're looking to capture, how wide of a, uh, an area that they take up. I've brought this out to sessions before, and it's been pretty handy because it, it you know covers the whole the whole group. Fair warning, I'm doing this bit here with this overhead road mic that I do all of my YouTube videos on because I think it works best for interviews, but I'll periodically splice in audio from the Zoom. Like right now, I'm talking through the Zoom. So this will give you an idea of what kind of like an interview style sound would sound like through this guy right here. One thing I will say about it is that these preamps, um, where you can actually plug in XLR mics, I could technically plug in this road mic into this, preamps aren't very good from my experience. I haven't found any mics that just really sound very good with it. I tried doing some of these YouTube videos with this thing a long time ago and it just, I don't know, there was a lot of noise. The one cool thing that this thing will do is that you can hook it into a mixing board and get live gig sound, which is how I got the audio for the video that I posted last week. But the main purpose that I use this thing for is bring it out to a session or if I want to get live recording, um, just live sound using the onboard mics, you know, these two here, because those I think do sound pretty good. What do you think? Let me know. These Rode mics, but really any boom mic, has a very specific purpose. It, they're extremely directional, so they work great for interviews, for movie sets, where you see the guy with the long boom pole, you can stick it out and it points just out of frame, but it puts the mic about this far, about a foot away from the subject. They work great for that. I don't think I've ever seen one applied in any other use, like at a session or at a gig or live audio. Because you can see as I back away and walk this way, it's not quite as, it's not picking me up nearly as much as if I'm right here. You know, it's just very focused. So again, they work great for that. I use this for all of my YouTube stuff. It's an awesome mic, but very specific purpose. Sure, SM58 is the standard. It's what you get when you're playing at festivals, at bars, performing arts centers. Everybody in the world has these things. They're great, they're reliable, they're awesome stage mics. They sound good. They don't sound amazing, but they sound good. And they will last forever. You, know, you buy them and you can beat them to death. This one's actually not in too bad a shape, but more often than not, you see them and the thing is all dented and beat up, but they still work fine. So that's why you buy one of these. They're great for the stage. When you're playing into it, you're playing really close and you gotta get pretty much right up on it. But the flute and the whistle, I tend to put it right, for the flute right here, right on the embouchure hole, whistle, you know, right where the, right there, we're just slightly below it typically. A lot of times I'll angle it down. If I'm playing, I'll just kind of point it down and be playing into it that way. It seems like that helps. <laughs> This is my favorite mic to play into for any kind of a live, especially larger shows, like performing arts centers and things like that, larger venues. It has a, a kind of a, a more pronounced low end, I think. Honestly, some of this might just be in my head, but for the flute in particular, these just seem to sound significantly better than the SM58s. Now, the SM58, it's a great mic, perfectly fine. To me, this is worth the $100 more that you'd pay for the beta. Now those more fastidious viewers among you might notice that the Beta 58 usually has a blue ring around it. This one did, it's just old and beat to death. It's gone, it's still a Beta 58, it's a real deal. But if I have to play someplace, this is the mic that I'm bringing with me. If I've got my own gear, this is the one that I choose to play into. Well, that mic's pretty handy. You clip it on somebody, you clip it on yourself, you don't have to worry about mic technique, mic positioning. It's always going to be the same. It's always going to be in the same spot. So that's kind of handy. You can kind of forget about it. The trade-off, though, is that you get a lot of, you get, you get some of this. You know, you get kind of this roughly kind of sound because it's usually attached either to your clothes or underneath your clothes. Whether that's a huge risk or not, kind of depends on the application of it, I suppose. But the sound quality, I think, is pretty good. I've never used this for anything live. The only time I ever did is just for this, for YouTube. Great for talking head segments, for playing music into and things like that, for kind of controlled, quiet environments. But I would never bring it on the stage. I would be worried about feedback and all sorts of other things that I could not control. This is an AKG Perception 200. I don't know anything about it more than that. I know AKG makes good stuff. This is what I use for doing any kind of scratch recording stuff just in the house. Um, somebody will send me a track and ask me to lay down a part or come up with an idea and I'll play it into that with my Focusrite adapter and into the Mac and off we go. 
and it works great for that. It's not a $10,000 Neumann, but it's not bad. It works pretty well, and it certainly does the job for what I need it to do. The amount of recording that I do at the house, eh, it works all right. I think it's pretty cool. It comes with this interesting little mounting system here, uh, shock mount to keep you know, any kind of noise, particularly loud foot stomps. You know, like you tend to get when you're playing Irish music, at least I tend to get. And if you're singing into it, you'd probably want to do some sort of a pop filter. I haven't really found much of a need for that for flute and whistle, but good little mic. And just so y'all know, for consistency's sake, I've been plugging everything into this XLR adapter that hooks into my camera. It's made by Panasonic. It's specifically for their mirrorless cameras. It's fine. There are probably better XLR interfaces. This... Scarlet focus right, Scarlet solo thing. Boop. This would probably be a better one. But that means syncing up in post, and I just didn't really feel like doing that for 20 some odd videos. I think this will work fine. Whatever it is you're using, you'll have to be aware of clipping. And if you're not sure exactly what that is, the short version is whenever you send too much signal, too much sound, through the mic, through the interface, uh, more than it can handle, then it's gonna distort and it's gonna sound like garbage. You fix that by checking to see where your loudest points are on that little meter, and you dial back the gain, dial back the input signal, uh, to the point where it's no longer hitting the top of that bar. You wanna give it a little bit of room, a little bit of padding on the little VU meter. Oh, also, I've been using a pretty good, reliable XLR cable. You don't wanna overlook that. I've had gigs not exactly ruined, but certainly <laughs> severely inconvenienced by bad cables. So there's really no point in going cheap there. So that's it. I hope you guys found this useful. Which mic did you think sounded the best? Of all the ones that I ran through here, what did you like? What do you play through? What should I try next? You know, any, any suggestions? I'm always open. And I'm kind of a gearhead. You know, I kind of like this stuff. Mics and hardware and, you know, interfaces and all that nonsense. So I do think it's kind of cool. I think it's interesting. Let me know what y'all think. Otherwise, see y'all in the next one. Cheers.